Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. We're in the chapter still talking about case classes, and in the last video we saw how we could use the uh, copy method in order to make copies of, of our case classes, of the instance of our case class, where we had changed some of the values. Now, you might have wondered how exactly that copy method worked, and in this video we're going to do something that at this point is a little bit of an advanced topic. So if you want if you want to just assume you can use the copy method and not understand how it works, feel free to skip this for now. Uh, but the in order to understand how the copy method does what it does, we want to uh, introduce default and named arguments. So previously when we've written uh, functions in Scala, let's go ahead and let's open up Scala here. And We'll write a little function. I don't really have anything too significant to pass into this. Uh, in fact, age is probably a horrible thing to have a default value for. But uh, okay, just something simple like that. So when we've written a function like this in the past, it takes two arguments, and the values that go into them um, depend upon the order that they appear in. So when I call this, if I do something like that, the we know that the string mark is passed in as name, and the integer 33 is passed in as age, because of the order that they appear in here. Okay, well, um, what if I wanted it so that, you know, I knew that most of the time that the system was being used and most people being registered in it were, for example, 18. Okay, then it might be nice to be able to call this and not pass in that argument, just give it a name. Of course, we can't do that here. In order to do that, we have to have a default value. And to set a default value, all we do is when we declare the function, we specify that that argument has a particular value to it. And after doing that, now we can actually call it passing only one argument. Remember the copy method, of we didn't have to pass in every value that was part of the case class. We only had to pass in uh, some of them. And that's because all of them were given default values. So it would also be possible to define this with two default values, and then it would be possible to call foo and not pass it anything, and it would use the two default values. So this is uh, the topic of defaults. It's a fairly easy concept to understand. You probably won't use it all that often, uh, but now you know that it's there. You can just give any of your arguments a value, and that will be used by default. Now what if I wanted to call this, and I like the name John, but I didn't like the age 18? Well, I can't actually say foo25 because it says, well, no, the, the first argument that you pass in here is supposed to be name, uh, and even if name has a default value, it's, that's still the first position. This is where named arguments come in. So you might remember from the copy method, we got to specify something like this. We could say when we made a copy, we uh, could give it the value that we wanted to set, and so we gave the name of the thing we wanted to set with an equal sign. Now this works. Okay, So this is giving a named argument to a function, and we use the same name that it was defined with. So for example, name up here and age. We could also do, sorry, that. Note that here I've swapped the order of the arguments. And normally it was supposed to be name followed by age, but when you give a named argument, it doesn't matter what order it comes in. As long as this name matches the argument name up here, uh, this functions in the code, and that's exactly how the copy method was defined. Uh, the copy method for our case classes is defined so that every element of the case class 
has a you know, has a name, obviously, and a default value. And because they all have default values, if we wanted, to, and the default value is the value that's currently stored in the object, if we want to give it a different value, we can specify the field that we want to change and what value it was. Uh, but there was nothing magical about this. This wasn't something that can only be done in case classes. You can do this in your own code just by giving things default values, and then if you want to call them out of order, you can specify a name. You might wonder why uh, the creators of Scala put this in there, and obviously it's helpful for things like uh, case classes, but the other place where it is useful is if you have long sets of arguments that uh, have, let's see, so def um, do something uh, x is a double, y is a double, z is a double, mass is a double, radius is a double. Um, I'm just going to make a return unit right now because I don't really care what it does. I just want to illustrate why you would use named arguments. Um, the problem here is that I have an argument list that has five arguments to it, and they're all doubles. Okay. And when I write this, I might think that XYZ mass radius is a nice logical ordering for this. But maybe someone else comes to the code and they think, well, actually, I think that mass and radius should come before x, y, and z, that they matter more, or whatever it is that they might think. The problem here is I have five arguments of the same type that are in, in kind of an arbitrary order. Uh, x, y, and z kind of belong in that order, but, but where these other things go, you don't know. And so when you see a call to this in the code, you just see five numbers being passed in. And it's not immediately obvious what those five numbers mean. And when, when you see this, it's not clear that 1, 2, and 3 are the x, y, z, and 4 and 5 are the mass and radius. But if you see this in the code, now you know exactly what those values are. And of course, the added benefit here is that If I don't remember the order in which they were specified when I created the, uh, the function, I can actually pass them in in an alternate order as long as I name them all. Uh, what if I remembered that x, y, and z were the first three things, but I couldn't remember if it was mass radius or radius mass? Well, I could also do that. And so if you start off arguments without names, <clears throat> it takes them based upon their position. So the first three things by default will be x, y, and z here, but I can also specify names for the things that come afterwards. Note that after you've started giving names, you can't stop giving names. Uh, I couldn't have given names to x, y, and z, put them in a different order, and then gone with, with mass and radius. Uh, wouldn't be happy with me for that. <clears throat> anyway. That covers uh, the topic of default and named arguments. So now you can understand how the copy method was actually written in the code. And you can do this type of technique in your own code as well.